guys have half to see this. This is the ugliest stove I could possibly find. But today, we're gonna turn this into a forced air shop heater. You don't think so? I think so. Let's do it. Feast your eyes on this beauty. Look at this. I think this is probably right about 1965. Honestly, when I was looking, I got it for one reason. And I got it because of these. These are just mesmerizing as a kid. Look at that. So I'm gonna reutilize these. So this is actually how you're gonna turn it, turn on your heater. Ah, so cool. It all, I actually plugged it in. Everything works, of course it does. Um, we're gonna use these burners, turn them sideways, put them in a tube, put a fan behind it and blow. I actually even got the matching range hood right here because I think I'm gonna utilize the fan out of that. Kind of cool, look at that, the styling of that. Wow, check out this wiring masterpiece. Look at that. That's pretty cool. These are our push buttons right here, 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 and here for a burner. So these wires right here are going to be your low, medium, high, or whatever going to the uh, directly to the elements. I'll put enough slack so I can pull through here and unwire it. Is this glass? Wow, the insulator is glass. Yep. This is like, probably just like Pyrex or something. Oh, that's cool. What a different world it was. I'll just disconnect these and we can go from there. The burning question, I know you're dying to know what's in the bottom. I don't even know. Chevy driveway uh, oil catchers. Sweet. Two of them. Oh no, this one's smaller. This one's a Chevy. This one's for a Dodge. Okay, I got the wiring sorted and I'll show you guys it's way easier than you think. So this is my push button thing, okay? All we have going in is three power wires. Well, not three power wires. There's uh, three wires coming in 240 volts, okay? So you have a hot, a hot, and a neutral. And so power between this and this are 240 volts. Power between this and this are 120. This and this are 120. Um, but between these two is where in the US we get 240 volts because they're out of phase from each other. I'm not gonna explain how the AC circuit works in the US. But that's all you need to know. This is the whole wiring. These three wires just need to be plugged into an outlet and then you flip a switch and then each one of the heating elements has three wires that go to it and depending on how you supply it, it actually looks like it might supply um, 120 volts to the coil, then 240 volts to the coil, and I haven't gone through to see exactly what it does to get the, uh, what is it, four different heat settings? Uh, five. We have five different heat settings on each one. Um, I don't know what the combination is, 120 on one, 240 on the other. So I'm gonna cut out a chunk and try to roll it. And I might use some of this or something for a foot or something for the unit. Um, we'll see. A nice flat piece of steel. There we go. Oh, that is thick. Is that even thicker? <laughs> That might be even thicker than 16 gauge. Wow, they knew how to build build stuff. If you need to replace the floor pans in your Ford truck, your Chevy truck, your Dodge truck, this is where you get material that's actually thick and will last for free. I made these as well, a whole video on that. And I'll try to clamp it. These are wide enough that they, they should try to flatten that seam out and then you weld it. And then it'll have a natural round to it. Otherwise it's just gonna be a peak. You know, it's just gonna come to a point. So just pass up through the bottom like that. Now there was this little um, tab that originally screwed on and this is what mounted it in there and it kind of 
it's hinged so you can move it up and down. I don't need it hinged. So that just sits right here. I'm just going to, it's just metal, I can weld right onto it. So I'll weld onto it a little tab right here that I can just screw in right here. So it'll mount there. And then on the inside, this is pretty stable, but I'll put a tab just in the case. I want these. I just welded a little tab on the inside. So this just falls through. tabs up top and put a screw in to hold the top so these are not moving on the two small ones are from this side and the two big ones are just from this side so those heating elements are in there good now they're a permanent fixture I like the variable speed I think I'm gonna incorporate that I think I'm gonna put this in about two inches, about right there, you know, almost flush. I kind of like the aesthetics of just being able to see, you know, the mechanics of it. So I cut down the front panel, and then these ends actually fit back on, but the light and stuff was up here, so they might have to be cut down a little bit more um, I think these are solid chromed stainless steel. So they're not magnetic, they're heavy, so I don't know. You can see I just cut off the stuff I don't need. But they wing out a little bit too far because I need a panel to actually go on the side of that. Sorry for the background noise, I got the heater going out here, it's cold. If you guys want to see the heater video on this one, I got a video on that one. That one runs off natural gas, works great. And that one right up there is my other electric one that I got a video on too. That's a an old electric dryer. That one works great too. I don't use it too often. Um, I want more power. That's why I'm building this one. I'm gonna cut a hole out in the back, roughly where I show, which actually might not be high enough. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. We'll cut out that hole. And that'll poke through, all the wires will poke through. It's getting kind of close to those wires, but I think it should work. I do think I need to extend the shroud. Before with this fan, it was actually kind of blowing out to the sides because it was right up next to a, a surface. I'm going to extend the shroud to cover the entire fan blade just so my wiring doesn't get snagged in it ever. So these are actually the bottom sides of the oven right here. So I cut them off each side, kind of have this nice little stamping. thought maybe I'd utilize that for the bottom feet on this. Um, so I need to just create a channel for my wiring to sit underneath the unit out of the way so something to this effect just kind of cut them big and I can weld them together and then I can just either screw these on or weld these on probably just weld them on because these should never come off Original feet. So to finish off the top of this, this used to sit on the very top of the entire oven. So I just cut off a piece, sat it on here. It sat way different. It sat like this and the light was under here, but um, I think it'll, it looks good. But now I need to cap off the sides. Originally I was gonna use these things. I just have to chop them down so much that, I mean, they sit out like this. I have to cut this whole thing off to make them fit not going to work good so we're just going to cut out a piece of aluminum um, that fits just on the side and we'll just screw it on there so we got some thin aluminum here from a actual washing machine so it's shiny on this side so we'll just cut out a piece two pieces one for each side kind of forgot about the fan switch for a minute um, so this is a plate I think I'm just going to cut off the fan side I don't need the light side at all and this is the box and it says front right there, but I think I can put it 
in between these two sets of switches. Um, and I think that would look pretty good. Doesn't really matter. Here we go. Fan, so you turn it high, 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 high. Fan on, and that should light up red, showing that it's on. So I need to do some sort of handle on it, and I have these, uh, these are the poles for the original door. And I thought about putting them back to back so you could kind of pinch it. But I just clamped one on the top right here, and it's, allows you to grab this really easy and that's just barely clamped on a small edge it has a nice rolled edge right here so I'll keep that on the front and I'll just chop off the back and make that not as pretty but I think that'll do in there I'll wire it up start finishing stuff up maybe we can plug it in soon absolutely ingenious um, I was testing this one and this one wasn't working the power wasn't passing through on one of the contacts I knew there's just little um, let me pull this out again this is not rebuildable but I'm making it rebuildable there's just little contacts in there and they were dirty so I cleaned them up. What happens is these little fingers, hold on, let me put this in. When you push a button, it moves these little bumps back and forth and will raise or lower different contacts. And on the front side of this, there's gonna be a little, on these little, there's gonna be like Bakelite um, discs or I guess plates. There's going to be little grooves that correspond to the push pin that lets it push left or right. And just moves these little fingers and opens up different contacts to do different heat settings. Kind of cool. I had to break it apart to get it apart. But um, we'll just super glue it back together. It should be good. Let's see. Let's touch it up a little bit. This is the green section. Sears avocado green. Oh, is that another avocado back here? Avocado green. Sweet. Appliance epoxy enamel. That should touch it up good. All the original wiring diagram. So we'll include that back with it.
Okay, see, look. G, up, down, round, E. Two letters. Okay? Be nice. Let's do this. Come on. It's two letters. Got this. Really fast. One stroke. We've got enough paint on there to do the whole thing. E, and around, around, around. Boom! Good job! Good job. That's it. Okay. Um, beg. Up. Okay, down, new five, good job, there you go. Oops, I dropped it. Masterpiece. There we go, these are the tops. They just look like wings to me, so I put them on the sides. I had to kinda, they were flat, I had to kinda cut the backs and bend them a little bit. Try not to store them, destore them too much, but now they look, you know, they're cool. They look cool, I think. Um, everything's functional, so you push each burner that you want. You turn on the fan. Did some hand lettering. I did some black striping just to kind of make it flow a little bit better. The GE symbol, of course. This is their vintage GE symbol. So now let's turn on. Let's turn on the fan. So the fan's on high. Hopefully that's not draining out your guys' sound. Let's do this. You can see it's already cooling itself down, which is good. But the other, this is the second burner on high. I believe this one I wired up. The small one here, the small one there. All four burners are on now. And this thing is pumping out some heat. Uh, I calculated it out, this is putting out about 25,000 BTU, which is five times what a conventional like plug-in space heater puts out. And those just kind of, usually they just trickle heat. This thing is powerful. That's amazing. That's awesome. That feels fantastic. And it looks cool. You have to admit, that green, that ugly, ugly green, it looks amazing. Somebody's going to find this in 50 years when I'm dead, and they're going to be, what the heck is that? That's so cool. You know? Look at it. It just looks cool. And it just looks like a stove. I don't know. I'm reading all these instructions. It says nothing about not playing in there, not letting your children play in it, not putting your dog in the oven. Come on. Hop up in. It doesn't say not to. We're, we're so dumb these days, we have to be told what not to do. Go ahead. Get in. Look. Get in. You don't want to get in the oven? Yeah, come on, get in. Okay, get in.